Hey everybody, welcome to Priceless B-Movies. I'm your host, Colin Price. Well, here it is, guys. You asked for it, and you're... Okay, so no one really asked for it, but you're getting it anyway. Wishmaster 2, Evil Never Dies. Wishmaster 2 stars Holly Fields, and she's this uh, kind of like, I guess like a, like a perky goth, as TV tropes would put it. And uh, she and her boyfriend are robbing a museum for reasons unknown to me. Why you would rob a museum, I have no idea. You'd think, like, generally, like, burglars in movies, you know, it's a bank or it's a, you know, even in Pulp Fiction when they're robbing the diner, that seems to make a little more sense than robbing a museum. But that's what the two of these kids are doing. And uh, they discover a gemstone, the gemstone that carries the djinn, the genie, from the first film, and wouldn't you know it, Holly Fields picks this thing up and breathes on it and all this and, re and releases the demon, once again played by Andrew Divoff. Of course, these two thieves aren't the best in the world, and pretty soon they get security guards and cops storming the area, and, you know, the guy is shot, and Holly Fields is like, Oh no, this is so terrible, he was my boyfriend, I loved him so much, oh well, I'm getting the hell out of here. And she runs, and of course she's taken the gemstone, which should further my... A belief of the one thing that women think is better than love. Oh my god, look at the size of that jewel. Mm -hmm. Of course, it wasn't actually the cops that killed him, it was the djinn, who, I guess after the first film, taking the form of Andrew Devoff, he can just kind of do that now, and he does, and he's arrested and taken to prison. So now we kind of get this almost, I wish it was the Shawshank Redemption, with the Jin from Wishmaster. And I gotta tell you, when this movie came out in 1999, I had this uh, subscription to Fangoria magazine. And, you know, I remember when the magazine came out and they had the Jin on the cover of it, and it just basically said, you know, the Wishmaster goes to jail. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'll totally get into that. Because the beauty of that is that if there's an environment anywhere where everybody wishes for something, everyone wants something, everyone longs for something, it's got to be jail, right? I mean, that makes perfect sense. It's a great setup for a sequel to the first Wishmaster film. And yeah, when Divoff, as the Jin, gets to prison, there's a number of sequences where he's tricking people into making these wishes and doing these horrible things to them in return. But this time around, I guess there's a sense of dark comedy. Not that there wasn't to the first film, but there's more a sense of dark comedy. In fact, one of my favorites is when one of the prisoners tells the djinn, man, my lawyer, he really screwed me over, man. We had evidence, and we had all the, you know, I could have walked, and he just, he just turned me over, and now I'm stuck here, and man, you know what I tell you, I wish that guy would just go fuck himself. It happens. The lawyer fucks himself. This is why I watch these movies. Getting right down to it, I like Wishmaster 2. I don't like it as much as I like the first movie, but that's just the curse of most sequels, because you're getting the same thing, the freshness is gone. But in this film, they do at least try to make it entertaining. And I'm not saying that the first one wasn't entertaining, but they try to... Oh, how do I put this? They try to make it a more, like, exciting experience. Because at this point, you know what the djinn is. You know what he's capable of. And so they, they put him directly into scenarios where you know the people around him are begging for something. Like I said, they put him in a prison. Well, the, the obvious choice, if I was in jail would be, you know, well, I want to walk through these bars and get out of here. Early on, someone actually wishes for that, and he puts them through the bars. It's not a pretty sight, but he does technically do it. Also, later on in the film, once he gets out of prison with the help of this weaselly Russian guy, who the actor's name I can't really recall right at this moment, and he ends up in Las Vegas, and this is even better! Oh my god, the idea of the djinn in Las Vegas. But also, here's where the film starts to falter a little bit and the budget starts to show. Because up to this point, if they had kept the djinn in the prison, it would have been a great sequel in and of itself. But they had higher aspirations than that, and they move him to Las Vegas. 
Well, the budget for this film clearly didn't dictate we can shoot in Las Vegas. So there's this set as a casino and a hotel, a couple of casino and hotel sets that they built for this that don't really fulfill that promise. It doesn't really look like the film is working to the extent that the screenplay promised. And everything starts to show a little bit and how, in the terms of how little money they really had to work on this. Now, Divoff is great. He's wonderful. He's, I, I almost think he's better in this one than he is in the first one because in this one he gets to have a little more fun, whereas in the first one he was basically, oh, well, I'm the bad guy. And in this one he has a few more one-liners. He's a little Freddy Krueger-ish, but not too much to the point where, like, it destroys any tension in the film. Now, I really don't want to give away any more than I already have, because honestly, I've given away a lot in this review so far. But as I said, Divoff is great. Holly Fields is pretty good. There were only a couple of scenes where I doubted her, and I, I can't help but feel like the people who made this movie kind of hired her on because she could cry on cue, because it's the only real talent that she demonstrates in this movie. This girl cries a lot. And I mean a lot, like to the point where that had to be the selling point for the casting agent, the director, whoever. That had to be the selling point because that's all she can really do. I didn't really buy any of her like one-liners and I didn't really buy anything that she did except when she was in distress. And unfortunately that kind of turned me off of her character. I, I, I couldn't really see her as anything but the final girl, unfortunately. And I know that's a trapping of a lot of slasher films, but it really hit me with this one. I, I really... She did a good job, don't get me wrong, but she did a good job playing one angle of a character that I thought could have been a little more interesting. I did enjoy some of the smaller parts too, like Bakeem Woodbine as uh, the guy who runs the casino toward the end, and uh, Tony Lister as a guard at the prison. You know, it's always nice to see kind of like the character actors, you know, the guys who kind of pop up in every other movie. And, uh, you know, it just for me, especially around the time that I first saw this and I was a teenager and I was kind of catching on to the idea that uh, there were some actors who just did horror movies and just did these parts just to do them and you can tell they were doing them just because they wanted to have fun with the characters. That always, you know, puts a smile on my face when I watch movies like this. So yeah, there's decent acting in general and I really like the script. I really like a lot of the ideas in this, but the budget really did kind of kill this to an extent. The, the effects don't look as good as they did in the first film and you know, it does in certain places just kind of victimize the main character. I couldn't even, even at the end of the film, when she gets the best of the gin, you know, she has to, otherwise there won't be a part three and a part four. But even when she gets the best of the gin, I couldn't really buy her as anything more than this sniveling little girl. I hate to say that. I really do. But that's kind of how her character struck me and I didn't like it. I didn't like that she, I, I couldn't buy her as a strong female character because I really wanted to. We all really want to when we watch these movies. Because of all that, I'm gonna give Wishmaster 2 two and a half stars. This is almost a three star film, but that kind of stuff really does bug me. That's my review of Wishmaster 2. Stay tuned, I got a lot more reviews coming. Thanks for watching and look out for more Priceless B movies.